All right, y'all. So we we <laughs> Louis is pissing Louis, Louis pissed me off this whole episode, bro. <laughs> like Louis pissed me off. Louis pissed me off. Claudia said you you be weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. So we start out this episode seeing Louis recovering from what happened. I mean, smash dash, vertebrae. Uh, I mean, his face was fucked. Everything was messed up. He could barely walk. I mean, he had to learn, relearn how to walk at this point, right? And we learned, because I had asked this question. I had asked y'all. I was like, have we ever seen Let's Stop Fly like that? And we learned that that it's called the cloud gift, I guess, or something like that. And for 20 years, Let's Stop did not let on that he could fly. Like for 20 years. And to me, that's some twisted uh, twisted level of dedication. I mean, if I could fly, I know I would be doing that shit even accidentally by the second, third day of trying to hide that shit, bitch. I would be just like Starfire in the original Teen Titans cartoon. She was always flying. I think I would even do that uh, accidentally in my sleep trying to hide that shit. I love, I mean, you know, but he hid that shit for 20 years. Um, and we see with all this that Claudia is helping Louis recover after she literally just saw him get dragged across the pavement, brought up in the sky and dropped like a damn dumbbell that you, it, at, the, at the damn gym. You see what I'm saying? Terrible, right? So Lestat keeps trying to apologize, showing up with a damn book, showing up with uh, Rolls Royce. Or whatever. I think what they are trying to tell us is that it had been three years since that whole situation happened by this point. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's what they said. But Lestat is over here trying to kiss ass, just the telltale signs of an abuser, right? After you done dragged the shit out of my ass and literally almost killed me, you coming back with gifts and shit. What the fuck is a car to my life, bitch? You got me fucked up. At least that's how Claudia sees that shit. Let's start over here talking about I've changed. Let me prove it to you. Claudia tossed them keys, but you could see that Louis is is listening. He's paying attention to what Lestat is saying. Like, he might not be 100% rece receptive of it right now, but Lestat can clearly see that Louis is, is like still feeling something for him. And that's why he keeps pressing. And I guess what finally got Louis' attention was the fact that Lestat wrote this damn song or some shit where he played every single instrument on the song. Um, but then Louis, I mean, Lestat's lover's voice is on the track. So Louis goes to confront Lestat. I mean, he's, Lestat was like, you're soaking wet. You you mean you, sent, you swam through the river, come see me? So Lestat knew at that point that he won, he won Louis back. He already knew that shit. He knew that shit. Um, at that point, Louis tells L Antoinette to get out her own house. If I'm not, <laughs> Antoinette's like, girl, this if that's her name. Um, Antoinette's like, girl, um, this is my house. What do you mean? And Lestat told her ass to leave. And it's, it's just <laughs> there's so much wrong with that. <laughs> it was just so much wrong with that shit. So they're over here fighting and fucking. That's what punching each other and kissing each other. That's the, I mean that's the nature of their relationship. Just violence and kissing. And of course, Lestat is just on top of the world. You know, Cl Claudia and Louis are setting rules for Lestat here. And I think that it's the dumbest shit ever because they don't use setting all these rules for somebody who's that powerful and who's like, you already know it's not gonna work. You already know it's not gonna work. He might kiss your ass for a couple months or a couple weeks. But after that, he's going to revert back to who, I mean, he already is who he is. So it's not even about reverting back to it, but I, he's going to get tired of performing this shit, tired of compromising. It's Lestat. Like, what do you mean? So they said, they said now rules as if this is going to fucking help the situation for real. Um, they want, um, one of, one of them is that they want, um, Lestat to kill Antoinette, his lover over there on the side. And I was like, they might be able to get him to do that since he don't care about nobody. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Um, they might get him to do that. Then I, then they said, oh, well, you can't lie to us, Lestat. I was like, you're never getting him to do that. <laughs> like, y'all, y'all, come on now. Y'all can't be serious. And then Claudia ends up saying, I'm not your child. Like, you gotta treat me as an equal, like a companion, as a sister. And so they, like, they really think that's going to, to, to matter. And then Claudia asks, okay, so who made you? Like, the fact that Lestat has not even talked about this with them at all, who made him, has not talked about his deep trauma, has not disclosed nothing in how many fucking years? And now you want him to open... I mean, 
So we get Lestat saying saying this, that he was turned by this guy named Magnus and Magnus fed on him every every night for a week, I guess, to lock him up in a place where there were a lot of bodies or corpses that looked exactly like Lestat. That he, I mean, it was implied that Lestat had to feed on him, right? Um, he, in the beginning, he was talking about, I did not want to feed on humans. I didn't want to do this, but I have a capacity for enduring. So, I mean, we already know that Lestat is a deeply traumatized person, right? But, and the way that he deals with it, the way that he feels compelled to deal with it is just by, look, I didn't want to be this monster. I didn't get, but I'm here now. And so I'm just going to do whatever makes me feel good, whatever. And it doesn't matter if it hurts you or not. Uh, I, that's the way that I'm, I'm compelled to deal with the way that I was traumatized. And that shit is abusive when it comes to Claudia and Louis, because Lestat is abusive to himself in a lot of ways. Um... Even even if his desires are so, like I say, hedonistic, Lestat is so fucked up. And he, and he wants everyone, like I keep saying, to experience that kind of pain, experience that kind of loneliness with his ass, I think. Um, and I think he's afraid of, as much as he wants intimacy, he's afraid of genuine connection because I think he's afraid of loss like everybody else is, right? But here, if he's telling the truth, we just find out that, you know, Lestat has had to figure all this shit out by himself you know has even his the person who turned him the person who made him he said that he died and whatever so it's like then he was alone and he had to figure all that shit out by himself so like deep 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 trauma here going on with lestat so claudia is just unmoved <laughs> she was just like i don't care about all that that was fun what you just said very okay whatever just make sure you kill Antoinette. just make sure you kill that girl and that's it um, and here we see people are catching on to the fact that they're vampires. They're not being, I mean, after, as you would, rumors would start to spread. Y'all bitches ain't aging if y'all live in the same house. It's just like people can start to connect the dots. And here, even though Claudia and Lestat both want to hunt human and Louis does not, like, even though that's something that Claudia and Lestat are similar, um, when it comes to the, they're just similar to, to each other with that. Um, Claudia still does not want to talk to Lestat. And I don't blame her. I do not. What do you mean? What do you mean? Because the next part here is that Louis tries to get Claudia to be kind to Lestat. He's like juggling, being the middleman between the both of them. And um, Louis just says to Claudia, which would have stung the shit out of me. Um, Louis says, do more, right? To Claudia and then walks out. And I'm just like, how can Claudia do more? She literally helped you recover, learn how to walk again after Lestat dropped you from the sky, okay? And now you're telling her to be nice to this motherfucker. You're lucky Claudia didn't smack the shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? She, I, but it's just the fact that he putting pressure on Claudia to, to make nice with Lestat is crazy as hell to me. Like, But it's also, you know, as people who are abused, they go through that. You know, they go through that. You try to get them to lead. They, and, and so I completely understand it. And I think it's a good job. The show is doing a good job at displaying just how difficult it can be for abused people. to First of all, even recognize that they're being abused. Sometimes they can't um, or it's difficult for them to. But then when they do, how difficult it can be to leave that cycle of like, because now he now let's stop buying gifts and shit and he can come back with, you know, it's just, that is a cycle of abuse that I'm glad the show is um, showing really, doing a good job demonstrating while also um, keeping in the vampire parts of that, vampire nests of it, if it makes any sense. So Louis is noticing while they're playing this, like Claudia and Lestat playing this game of chess, that there are a lot of like with the way that they treat each other, the way that they exploit um, people and, and, and weaknesses and shit like that. They're just a lot, a lot alike. And Claudia is really pressing Lestat about his lovers, the death of his lovers and his maker and all this shit while they're playing chess. And um, of course, it, this is the first game, right? So she she lose, ends up losing this game. It Obviously, them playing chess with each other is so symbolic. It represents so much shit, <laughs> right? But it's implied like, Claudia, you can't play this game with me. You can't like stop the game of life, the game of vampire, the game of whatever. <laughs> you know, this game of life, baby. You can't keep up with me. You can't play me. You're trying to come for me and you can't. And that's what it gave. Right. But Claudia is really pressing Lestat's buttons and Louis can see it. And he says, you're ugly when you get like this. And then she says to him, better ugly than blind. And it's just 
I 100% can understand Claudia's like, like, come on now. Like, I just get it. I get why she's so pissed. <laughs> like, you ain't finna beat up my my damn dad. I mean, now they brothers, but you know what I mean? Brother and sister, but you know what I mean? You ain't finna beat up somebody I care about and just come in. And I'm supposed to just accept that shit. Um, so then we see that, that Antoinette is fucking alive. And and we get to see some of the way that Lestat thinks about what's happening. Lestat says, Claudia is poisoning Louis against me. It's the both of them. Da, 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 da. I've heard that so many times. I've heard that kind of language. You know, abusers will be like, it's not my fault. All, the, all of this pain and devastation that I'm causing, it's not my fault. Um, and, and this person's reaction to the pain that I'm causing them is, is bad. And that's why they want to cut you off from anybody that you, they want to cut their victims off from anybody that they can rely on or anything because it's like they're poisoning my victim against me how did no they're just growing they're waking up and you're mad about the control that is slipping through your fucking fingers that's what you're mad about Lestat. so yeah we find out that Antoinette is still alive even after Lestat said that he would kill her and presented a finger to them we find out here that she, he definitely took that finger as and it's just like Antoinette wants to run away. She was just like, girl, we could leave the both of them and just go on about, on about our business. And that that was it. But Claudia and Louis find out. They're standing there listening to them, watching them have this conversation. And Louis doesn't even want to bring this issue up because he, he even tells Claudia, like, it doesn't even matter if I bring it up. He wanted us to discover him because he's all kinds of fucked up. And whether he knows that we know or not, what's the point? He's still, he's still powerful. Like, he's still a star. I think that's kind of what we were supposed to draw from what Louis was saying. And Claudia and Louis are trying to plan to run away during telepathy while, like, Louis and Lestat were fucking around. And Claudia says, I'm leaving. Come find me when Lestat hurts you. Because he's going to hurt you again, babes. <laughs> so you could just come find because I'm gone. I'm, I'm taking that train. Um, but just come, just come find me when it's done. So Lou, when, when he comes for you, okay. Cause he's going to come for you again. So Louis said, you didn't just say goodbye here because he's like, sis, you don't need me no more. You're smarter. You got this. Um, I think this point was kind of made clear with how, uh, Louis was losing grip on his French a bit. I think that's what this, this scene was saying. Um, but yeah, he was just like, you don't need me no more. I think Louis knows that he just cannot get away from this thought. And if he, or just either physically, emotionally, he just can't, can't do it right now. Um, and since he can't, and he knows that Lestat is dangerous, he knows it, at least Claudia can get away. At least she can live. Um, and, and that, of course, it was so sad to see them hug like that. But I was happy when Cla Claudia, uh, Claudia got on that train. And it was 19, it's 1939, so of course, you're a black girl, you're a black vampire on top of that, like... You get in where you fit in at this point, and that's what she did. And we think that she's on her way. You know, even it was very sad because the next one of the next thing was uh, Louis was thinking about taking his his life, but he decides to go home anyway. He's like whatever, or go home instead. He's like whatever, I'll just go home. He tells Lestat, "Oh, what's up, honey? I'm home." And we see that Claudia, in fact, did not make it out. And once I saw her sitting there with her blank facial expression, like, oh my gosh, I was like, oh yeah, Lestat went and got her ass. Now, at first I thought that Lestat was going to be able to hear what they had been thinking all along. I think Lestat can hear, not not hear, I think Lestat can tell when they're talking, but I am i don't think he can tell what they're saying. Now, I could be wrong about that because he went and found her on this goddamn train easy, okay? Um, so I, I could be wrong, but just... I think that we would, Lestat would not be able to prevent himself from reacting to certain things that they were saying to each other with the telepathy. That's why I think that he doesn't know what they're saying specifically, but I think he know he can tell when they're talking sometimes. I could be wrong about that. Let me know if y'all think I'm wrong about that. But yeah, he goes on his train, it drags the fuck out these girls at the front, stops the train, I think. It, that's what it gave me. Um, and Claudia was just like, yo, you could just let me go. You don't even want me. It's, this shit is not even about me. Just let me go, right? And Lestat's like, that's not happening. <laughs> we endure each other for Louis' happiness, basically. And he tells her, if you try this again, I'll turn your bones into dust. Like, I'm not going to treat you like the, that, <laughs> the, the way that you got assaulted, but I'm going to turn your, your entire spirit into dust. And it was just so, oh my God. When she started crying and shit, just like, oh my God, here, here Lestat is again. And Lestat was holding that goddamn um, 
that, that person's head, I was like, this man, y'all have to find a way to get out of this situation. There's only one way out. Y'all already know what that way is. So while they're playing a chess game, again, then it's another game. And she's just, Claudia seems way more confident. It seems like she is, she's now predicting how Lestat will act. She understands um, parts of his motivation. That's why she was just offering up these big pieces when it came to chess. Like you talking about bishops and rooks and shit like that. You talking about knights, giving up your plane, your, your, um, giving up those pieces and just leaving your pawns. Like, of course, just handing Lestat over everything would distract him enough for you to, to be able to win. You know, and that's exactly what she does here while she's talking to Lestat. She's talking to Louis, sorry, in tele telepathy, saying that, yo, you already know it's only one way out. And she she makes this observation here, which I think is important. She says that um, Lestat told us that his maker died. But I think that while he was enslaved, Lestat killed his maker. And that's what we're going to have to do to him. That's if we want to survive. That's what we're going to have to do with him. So you, I'm going to kill him. And Louis keeps saying, no, 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 please don't do it. I thought she was going to do it right now. That's why I was agreeing with Louis. Like, please don't try this shit right now, um, Claudia. Like, y'all both need to sit down, come up with a plan, catch this, mon catch this man by surprise, you know, distract him, act quickly, and, and be done with it. That's what y'all need to be doing. Y'all don't need to jump over the table right now. I thought that's what she was going to do. But she didn't. She didn't. She just made her point. She won the game. She put him in fucking checkmate. He was pissed. <laughs> he was pissed. He was pissed. Um, and she, and and it just it just signifies that she now is able to predict. She's now able to win. She's now able to get into Lestat's way of uh, method of thinking, the way that he will act. So it's just if she keeps taking notes, if they come up with a plan together, they can do it. Claudia tells him that she knows. Or Claudia tells Louis that she knows that he, Louis wants to kill the stop and that he would enjoy doing it too. So we gotta we gotta get into it. We gotta get into it. And that's the only way out. Um, I just love the way that Lestat lost his shit. He could not handle her winning. <laughs> lost his shit. And also this was a really cool uh introduction to how the writer and Louis kind of meet. And how he's like, I want to interview you. It's giving flirtatious eyes as well. And seeing Jacob Anderson in, in this hair, this is so cute. <laughs> it was so cute. It was so fun. Um, but it's going to be interesting to dive into uh, the writer and Louis' relationship even more, interaction even more. Uh, I can't wait for that. And I also can't wait for this fight between uh, Lestat and Claudia um, and Louis. But like I said, if they're going to take Lestat, they have to plan. They have to practice. They have to make sure that they catch him by surprise. They have to distract him. They can't just walk up in there and just think that everything's going to be fine. Ma'am, he dropped your ass from, you know, 20,000 feet in the fucking air. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure I saw an airliner right next to his Like, y'all have to get into it. So plan this shit out and let us have a great. I think the finale is next. If I'm not wrong, I think the finale's next. So yeah, I'm worried for my girl, Claudia, cause I don't think she's making it out of this one. Especially with the way that Louis just talks about her in, in present day, especially when he's interviewing with the writer, the way that he acts like she ain't there no more. I don't know, I don't know. It don't look like she getting out of this. I, <sighs> it's just, it's y'all have to plan. Please plan and practice so we can get a good clean fight next episode, all right? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. Hope you liked the video and I will catch y'all later.